And when our kids are getting mixed messages, then that can, that can really mess up the dynamics at home. If you communicate well, we can, we can resolve anything. We just need to be able to sit down and have a conversation about it. The biggest challenges I've seen is what is my role? for both sets of those of those dads. You know, what is my role now? Even if the divorce was a contentious divorce, even if the marriage was not a healthy marriage and you're relieved that whew, at least I'm not dealing with that conflict every day, there's still some grief that's attached to that. You need to open up space for guys to say, this is hard and sometimes it sucks and I need some support we're partners and we're the leaders of the family. Repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. We're talking co-parenting with the expert today, guys. So let's go. Well, hey guys, welcome into the Next Men Up podcast once again. So good as always to have you along with us for another episode. You know this, my name is Mark and I will be your host along with my sidekick John today for another engaging and informative conversation. But before we get to that, just another reminder, if you want to connect with us, here are some ways. You can check us out on the web at thenextmanup.com. You can email us your questions, your suggestions, your feedback at feedback at thenextmanup.com. And if you're so inclined on Facebook, you can like and follow us at NMU Journey. However you prefer to engage with us, we encourage and look forward to you doing so. Well, as you heard me say, today we're going to get into the topic of co-parenting specifically inside of the blended family context. And to help us do that, our guest will be Amy Ambrosich. Here, here's a little bit about Amy. She's a dual certified parenting and step family coach. She's the founder and owner of Dare to Parent. She provides private coaching for couples to help them create an effective discipline plan and to strengthen their parenting partnership through her signature coaching program, Steps for Success. In addition, she's an active parenting workshop facilitator for the Worthington Schools, a, a local school district here in the Columbus area, and she serves as vice chair for the Worthington Cares Coalition. Also, she's launching this fall a membership-based online parenting group called Save Our Sanity, which we get into a little bit toward the end of this episode. It will serve as a safe place to talk about the hard parts of parenting, as well as learn weekly parenting and step family tips and strategies. Well, if you recognize Amy's name, well, that's because she first joined the show three years ago, by the way, episode 73, if you want to check that out. And we wanted to bring her back to talk about this th this co-parenting and blended family scenario, uh, a topic y y that we have not yet addressed specifically on this show. And couldn't think of a better person to do it than to invite Amy back and to talk about this specialty of hers and this work that she's very passionate about. And as you will hear, John and I had a great conversation. We could have gone so much longer, but, but I want you to know this. If you're in this situation right now, this blended family or this co-parenting situation as a result of a death or a divorce or separation, there's something in here for you. If you have a buddy who's in this situation, there's something in here for you. And if you just want to learn, there's something in this episode for you too. So let's get to it. Here is John and I talking with parenting and step family coach, Amy Ambrosich. Amy Ambrosich, welcome back to the show. It's been a bunch of years since we last connected in this context. So good to see you and have you back with us for an, another round. 
Thank you so much for inviting me back. I'm super excited to sit and chat with you again. It's been, you're right, it's been way too long, way too long. <laughs> I, I think I think it's been about three years. Uh, I didn't go back and actually pull the episode number from when uh, when we, when, when the first time you were here, but I think it's been about three years. And oh, um, as John and I were thinking about different topics and doing some planning, th- this idea of co-parenting came up and I'm like, oh, I know exactly who I'm going to reach out to and invite her back. So it's, um, although the topic as often is in this context is kind of a big and somewhat heavy topic, I'm excited that you are the one to help walk us through this topic and, and shed some light and share some some wisdom with, with our audience. Because this is not a topic that we have hit yet specifically, and I'm sure I'm sure that we've got audience members that are dealing with this now, have dealt with it in the past, or will deal with it in the future. So it's it's probably both a timely and a timeless topic. So anyway, thank you. I'm uh, excited to have you back. Well, thank you. And, you know, it, it's been interesting because we have seen such a shift for kids more and more kids are involved in a step family, blended family unit of some sort, more so than nuclear kids at this point. There's definitely been a shift in that and the services aren't necessarily there all the time for them. So I'm excited to be here, share some wisdom, share some insights, and I'm going to let you guide me through what you need and I'm here to help. Yeah, so cool. So let's start with this. And maybe this is a little bit too rudimentary, but I, I'm just learning not to make assumptions about terms and words and labels. And so so we're talking about co-parenting here, and we're going to use the term blended family a lot, I'm sure. But Amy, tell us what, what that means. Like as you think about that in, in the context of the work that you do and the discussion that we're about ready to have, what does that mean for you? When I think of co-parenting, for me, no matter if you're a nuclear couple, meaning both birth parents together in the marriage, or if you're a step couple, meaning one or both of you have brought kids into the marriage, um, there might be an ours baby or two in there also. Um, The co-parenting piece is really, for me, it's about strengthening you as partners in parenting. That family foundation, you know, making sure you're on the same page for vision values and goals and all of that. But when we pull in our blended families, there's a whole nother dynamic because Mm. you've got um, former spouses and and ex-in-laws and kids coming in and out of the house and things like that. So it just opens up a whole nother, I don't even want to say a chapter, a whole nother book that we need to go through on strategies to make that co-parenting thing work well. So that's an excellent... um... Excellent definition and distinction because what you're saying is co- co-parenting really is uh, what happens in a more nuclear family and in these other blended families. So, so there's like, how do you work together with the, in, in our case, our audience's dads, right? So how, did, how do our dads work together with the mother of their child, right? Mm-hmm. But then a subset of that is also the the blending of X's and and O's and Y's and, and Z's, right? <laughs> just, just to have a little fun with that, but like just the the, the blending side. And so a, as we go, um, let me just ask you to keep me honest in making sure I'm using the right terminology and it, and and I'm using the right terminology the right way, so so that it's clear for me and it, it's it's clear for our audience. Deal? Absolutely, I'll do my best. <laughs> okay, I know that was not part of the agreement that we talked about ahead of time, so I'm kind of springing that one on you. But it's um, all good. <laughs> again, back to back to words matter. Words have significance and and meaning, and and part of this is 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 all getting on the same page. So let's roll it back just a bit because you started to hint on something that I, I wanted to to move to before we get into the the more specifics of the the co parenting side or the the blended family side, and that is your starting point 
for any of the work that you do with parents, that, that foundation that you help them build together. Talk about that. Okay. I firmly believe, and this comes from watching my parents who were married 65 years, raised five kiddos together. And um, I always call them the ultimate partners in parenting. Mom and dad had each other's back. They were on the same page. Um, the five of us couldn't really pull off anything because if you know, we went to one parent, you know, they immediately turned around and said, well, what did your dad say? Or what did your mom say? So there's that basic um, partnership that I think all couples need to work on while they're, it's working on their relationship as well as working on their parenting. And there's the family foundation piece, which is the first piece that I really work with any couples on, um, building that vision, family vision. What does that look like for each of you individually? And then let's build a shared vision to make sure that we're, it's kind of like making sure we've got the same destination in the GPS. You know, you may have some ideas of what you want family life to look like. Your wife may have some ideas too. They don't necessarily mesh or blend, or you might be assuming something about your partner's, you know, vision that we haven't confirmed yet. So the vision piece is super important just so we know we're on the same page, aiming in the same direction. So it's vision. And then I work on values. It's interesting to see couples. I've got one couple in mind as I, as I share this story. She had said to him, your boys are so disrespectful. And he was so offended by that. And I realized, I'm wondering if respect is defined the same way for both of them. So we, we literally spent 45 minutes really tearing apart what values look like to each of them. Because your assumption of what respect looks like comes from your family, your birth family of origin. Your wife's is the same way. So do we define it the same way? How are we going to define it for our family that we're raising now? So I work on vision, I work on values, and then I work on goals because I want to make sure, again, that we're aiming for the same thing. When we're being partners in parenting, we need to make sure that we're on the same page for discipline, communication, um, even things like activities. How many activities per season, per kid kind of thing? You know, it's those goals because the real goal is making sure that our family has has a good time growing together, you know, and if we're exhausted all the time because we're running a hundred different directions separately, we're not going to build that, that mutual bonding within the family that everybody really wants when we become parents. So for all couples, vision, values, and goals, we have to have to have that family foundation as the starting point. And, and that applies regardless of how the couples came together, whose kids they're Absolutely. raising, right? Like that, that, that's the beginning point for what sounds to me like any healthy parenting and, and marriage relationship. Yep, absolutely. And if we don't, if we're not on the same page, there's going to be so many conflicts that come up. And it also gives mixed, mi mixed messages to the kiddos. And when our kids are getting mixed messages, then that can, that can really mess up the dynamics at home. You know, they can start challenging one against the other. They can start rebelling quite, quite, easily because like, well, mom said this and dad said that, so I'm just going to do whatever I want to. So when parents are on the same page and working together as a team, you know, again, it, it can't go sideways if you're both on the same road. It, it, it sounds, I have a tendency to want to simplify things down. And I know this is a bit of an oversimplification, but it, it sounds like, huh, communication is important. <laughs> Talking to each other, is key. <laughs> right? Exactly. Talking to each other, and and then, and then guided communication around the things that are the same, the things that are different, the things we share, the things we don't have in common, right? Just like get getting that stuff out ahead of time in an intentional, purposeful way. I know that can head off a lot of problems that that will uh, otherwise materialize down the road. Absolutely. In fact, when I do my coaching program with couples, I spend one of our sessions, it's a full session just on co-parenting and communication. Because if, if um, we communicate well together, we can handle all of the other things, but we need to make sure that we're, you know, we're in tandem when it comes to our communication piece. And those are also strategies that then you use with your kids too. So, and communication, of course, is, is the key to any relationship. If you communicate well, we can, we can resolve anything. We just need to be able to sit down and have a conversation about it. 
Okay, so so that is the foundation that I wanted you to set before we go a little bit deeper. And so, as I said, when John and I were thinking about topics and and where to go, we realized that we've we've not really addressed on this show the dad who is the single parent, the dad who has experienced a divorce, the the dad who's going through a difficult situation, e- even like we've we've sort of just barely and recently uh, addressed the the dad who's in a difficult marriage relationship right now and, and still trying to parent. And so like if the statistics are to be believed, half of our audience is is um, it has experienced divorce in in some capacity. And so I, I want to go a little bit deeper and kind of get into this idea of co-parenting within a divorce situation or a blended situation. And 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 I figured a good good place to start would be because this is not my story. I've not walked in these shoes. What are the challenges that that Obviously, there's two parties here, our audience is dads, but what are the challenges that that the dads are going to face or are facing as they walk this road? Um, there's, I almost feel like there's two camps. There's the divorced dads who are now, you know, parenting in their own home, but co-parenting with a, a birth parent from another home. Um, there are challenges because your parenting within your own home, the other parenting, the parent is parenting within her own home. The rules aren't necessarily the same. And it's so important for co-parents in that situation of dual homes, so important for you as much as you can to keep consistency for the kids. So if you have certain rules in your home, it's so helpful. I wish I could emphasize this more, but it is key for the kids to, to succeed if both parents have just about the same rules. Of course, there might be slightly different bedtimes or things like that, but I've dealt with um, parents who are stepping into a step family um, situation, but they're also co-parenting dual households. And it's so hard because within our home, we have these rules, but then when the child goes to the other the other birth parents' home, it's video games that are, you know, rated PG-13 when you're not of that age. It's um, staying up all night. It's eating junk food all day. So there's that, that um, I want to say friction is the best word I can use. When you are a dad and you're trying to parent the best you can in your home and then you send your kids, you know, back to mom, and then there's a whole different set of rules there. And this goes biologically both, you know, both sides have this argument that the other parent has, you know, too much um, freedom within that house and we have rules and things like that. So that's a typical friction that that parents go through when they're divorced and co-parenting. Um, if we're going to step into the shoes of a dad who's now is within a blended family, he's got he's got some shoes to fill because there's a dad missing. And do I step into those shoes? Do I step into a dad role? Do I step into just a, I'm a supportive adult in this house role? Where is my role? Mom has a relationship with her kids. I'm the outsider coming in. If I'm bringing my kids in, now we're trying to blend everybody together. So there's a lot of family dynamics that are shifting and changing and growing. And, and you know, there's growing pains within all of that. Um, Gosh, I feel like I could talk about this stuff for like hours, but um, <laughs> just depending on which camp you're in, we've got some different things to do. The biggest challenges I've seen is what is my role for both sets of those of those dads? You know, what is my role now? I'm part time now with my kids. I'm not full time with my kids. I'm trying to figure out how to be a stepdad to kids who might not want me in the house, don't need me in the house, maybe resent me for being there, um, or just trying to figure out they want to let me in, but then their loyalty lies still with their birth dad. So they feel bad for, you know, even being nice to me, because then does that mean that I'm, you know, being awful to dad because I'm showing this other man some love? There's so many, oh, Mark, I, and John, I just, 
there's so many like road roads off of this one that I could go through. <laughs> Amy, you just identified that the key, one of the biggest challenges to dads is identifying their role. And so I'm just wondering about the emotional stuff that they're dealing with along with that. If, if there's a way to help them just think through not just the purpose, but the emotions that they're dealing with. Does that make sense? It does. One of the things that we don't acknowledge out in the world, but I really wish we would talk more about this is the grief and and on um, the sadness that comes with it. You know, even if the divorce was a contentious divorce, even if the marriage was not a healthy marriage and you're relieved that whew, at least I'm not dealing with that conflict every day, there's still some grief that's attached to that because none of us get married with the intention of separating and divorcing and being mad at this person. Um, you know, so there's, there's, a, there's some, um, you know, there's the grief envelope that we have to unpack sometimes that we don't. And especially with men, I don't think we allow men to identify those feelings and to process through those feelings because you just need to, you know, buck up and be a guy and, and go do your next thing. So um, I think we need to, and maybe this is the nurturing mother in me, but I think we need to nurture men through that more and mm -hmm. allow them some space. That's one of the first emotions that we have to deal with is, you know, and then there's the carryover baggage emotions of I'm still mad at her and yet I have to co-parent with her. You know, and I still have to try to, in front of the kids, be kind and say nice things and, you know, it, it, mind my, my P's and Q's so that I don't sully the kids against mom. But at the same point in time, I really just can't stand seeing her, let alone having to have a conversation with her. There's some, you know, some of those relationships are, are high conflict. And that's, I think, hard on dads because they're trying really hard to, um, be kind and use kind words and things like that. But at the same point in time, they're still angry. They're angry about whatever happened in the previous relationships. So we've got to, you know, help them with that. Um, when they step into the role of stepdad, feeling lost, feeling confused, feeling frustrated, um, wanting, you know, I think part of, part of the friction that comes in that is that oh, I've got this, you know, wonderful woman and this, you know, look at us, we're building this, you know, this bigger family and things like that. But where do I fit in with her kids? Um, I want one-to-one -one time with my wife, but there's all these kids around. You know, with those of us that are in a nuclear relationship, we're like, you know, we get time when we want time. You don't get that when you're in a step family or a blended family because you're having to share it with everybody else. You know, there's a lot of other people that we have to share with. So I think that wanting to keep that relationship top priority, but how do we do it? That's hard. That's hard on both parents. Um, but I think we need to recognize that for guys that it's okay that you're struggling with trying to figure that all out. Um, you know, women, we can be emotional and people are like, oh, it's fine. You know, they we support each other and, you know, pat each other on the back and move on. I don't know that guys do that as much. And I wish we could, especially because there's so many stepdads out there that do feel lost because there is no, I was going to say there is no book on it. There's actually some really great books <laughs> out there. Well, who's got time to read books when you're mm -hmm. raising those kids? Um, Ron Deal, I will throw this out there though. Ron Deal has phenomenal books when it comes to step families. And um, he's, he's got this great approach to the whole step family thing where he breaks it down. You know, how to be a great step dad, how to be a great step mom, um, building that loving relationship. He's got a million books and they're all really good. Um, but he's one of very few that are out there saying we need to nurture the dads in their, in their process of trying to figure out what they're what their role is, what their emotions are. Um, I think some stepdads that I've talked to, I've got one in mind in particular. He's actually, his fiance has a daughter. He doesn't have any kids. And he's like, I've never been a dad before. What am I getting myself into? You know, and, and my stepdaughter's 
going to be 11. And what am I supposed to do with that? You know, I missed the first nine years of her life. And then I kind of sort of was in part of the last two. So what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to relate to this child that I haven't helped raise the whole time? I, there's a lot of emotions out there that we need to open up space for guys to say, this is hard and sometimes it sucks and I need some support and some strategies. I hope that helped. It did. And I'll, okay. I'll just add, I can imagine some potential other emotions are when you're dealing with uh, your sense of failure and, you know, for particular scenarios or just any shame involved. Um, so that's, that's a, I agree. Um, we, we have to help men. And this is why we're having this conversation help men um, fully, not just here's your task. Now, we, if you're going to really help somebody, you got to deal with the whole person. And Absolutely. And the other part of that too is if we nurture dads through their emotions, they're going to come into the relationship so much healthier, then they'll be better partners for their wives, for the, they'll be better parents for the kids. And that's the answer, of course, for everybody. But I think, again, we don't we don't tend to nurture dads through their emotions the way we do moms. This is so helpful for me to think about it because, again, kind of boiling things down, playing back to you what, what I heard you say, Amy, there's the dynamic of the, the dad working through his own stuff, which is language that we've used here, working through his own stuff. There's the dynamic of working on a new romantic relationship as you're going into a blended family and the dynamic of entering into a different parenting relationship. Maybe that's with a different partner for your child or you are the different partner or dad for your partner's children. There's like three different components there. And, and I think what I'm, what I'm hearing you say is it's hard and we need to acknowledge that to John's point, there aren't just tasks to accomplish. This is a hard thing. It takes self-work. It takes one-to-one -one with your new partner and it takes a lot of, a lot of additional work as, as the dad going mm -hmm. into this new situation. Like I just, I, I don't think because it's not been part of my story, I don't think I had an appreciation for it in, in until you laid it out the way that you did. Thank you. I appreciate that. I think part of it is we don't appreciate it because A, we haven't walked that journey and B, even if we have friends that have walked the journey, we don't really get into this deep of a level of it. You know, it's very surface level. You know, oh, how do you get along with the ex or how is it having the kids coming to go? We, we keep it very surface and we, we don't dig into this hard stuff because it feels awkward, I guess. So I'm wondering what's the reality, you know, you, using your uh, scenario of your uh, client that is um, going to be parenting for the first time, what's the reality for him to think, all right, after 18 months, this is all going to be good. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I'm sure that's not right. Help us with that. How long should a dad expect for things to find some sense of normalcy? Mm -hmm. Most people in our in this circle say it takes five to seven years for a blended family to feel that familyness, that fam to feel more like a family unit, because there's so many different dynamics that you know that come into play, and there's a lot of speed bumps along the way between. It's the honeymoon phase mm -hmm. of, oh, this is great and everybody's getting along and, you know, look, the kids don't mind sharing bedrooms and stuff. I can promise you that that's, you know, it's a short honeymoon. Mm -hmm. And then we start realizing that, oh, wait a minute, we're all stuck together now, you know, and now what? So then we have to go through, there's so many different relationships that all have to be nurtured and give give some space and grace and things like that. So anyone coming into a blended family thinking, oh, the first year might be rough and then it'll be great. I'm sorry to say, unless you're going to do the intentional work with a coach, I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's going to be, they say five to seven years and a lot of these couples don't make it that long. Mm -hmm. It's problems with parenting and finances that tear them apart. Or there's a high conflict ex that just throws a monkey wrench into everything. 
and they just call it quits because they're like, this is so much, that's the phrase I hear the most. This is so much harder than we thought it was going to be. Mm. And those of us of a certain age, remember the show, The Brady Bunch? You know, where, oh, there was- You got it. There you go. There you go. Yes. So The Brady Bunch um, was one of the first shows to really talk about blended families, Mm -hmm. but they solved everything within a half hour. Mm -hmm. The reality is that doesn't happen. You know, it just doesn't. And there's so much behind the scenes that we need to do. It was lovely that they got that idea out there into the world. Like there are families that look different than yours if you're a nuclear family. But I think people saw that and were like, oh, this isn't that hard. You know, because look at Mike and Carol. They solve everything in a half hour with Alice's help, you know. (laughs) So, and it's just not the reality. (laughs) Amy, have you seen the movie Yours, Mine, Ours? Oh, I think years ago. Yeah, it came out in 2005. I, uh, I, I pulled it up on my favorite app, IMDb. Uh, stars Dennis Quaid and Renee Russo, and, and 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 it is a blending of families. Both bring a number of kids into it, and um, the they do it in such a comedic way. But there's some there's so much truth there. the The personalities of dad and mom are different, and the way they run the family is completely different. They, they were enamored with each other. And I think if, if memory serves, they were former like high school or college sweethearts that went different directions, came back. Um, I won't give the whole plot line away, but there were so many things that they didn't talk about or figure out on the way in. They just both made their own assumptions. They crashed these big families together and there was a brief honeymoon period and then just chaos, chaos mm-hmm. and rebellion. And of course it's dramatized, it's Hollywood, but I, I, I'm picturing them in a real situation as you're talking about just how, just how hard it, this is. Cause there was at one point in the show where they're like, why are we doing this? We should just, we should just throw in the towel and be done. This is, this is not what we thought it was. This is too hard. Let's, let's just quit. Um, if you haven't seen it recently, please go watch that movie because Amy, it's right up your alley. Like you, <laughs> you will get it in a way that anybody that most people most people won't unless you've lived it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very much. And going back to John's time frame, uh, Ron Deal talks about, and I love this. This is such a great analogy. A lot of people think it's going to be an Instapot recipe, and it's really a slow cooker recipe. You know, the Instapot, you, exactly what, like you said, Margaret, in that movie, you just throw everything in there, hit the heat and go and assume it's going to be great at the end of it. Slow cooker is the process that we have to go through Crock-Pot, bring out that Crock-Pot when we're thinking about step families, because everything needs, all of the ingredients go in, but then everything needs to soften up a little bit. And then the flavors start to blend a little bit and what it takes a long time for that to happen. So step family life, it's not Instapot life. It's 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 the crock pot slow cooker life because it really does take time for people to soften, to give and take, to make room for each other, to work together and start sharing those flavors together. You know, it doesn't, it's not an instant blend. And it's, and anybody that says that they did, either they had a miracle in their home or they did a lot of work beforehand, that preparatory work, so that it did go smoother than t- than is typical. So I imagine, Amy, in the slow cooking process, uh, discipline has to be one of the key issues that comes up. Is that right? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And we need to when we think about discipline, there's so many factors with it, but we really need to be aware of what is your parenting style, what is your partner's parenting style, because the kids are used to a certain thing. So we need to think about that. Um, We need to figure out if you're blending and you have young kids, it's easier for the discipline because dads can step in. I'm talking kindergarten and younger. You know, those kids, oh, you're just another adult, you know, and I kind of follow the rules the adults give me. Once the kids start getting into elementary school, they're like, wait a minute, that's not how my dad does it. And why do I have to listen to you? And then you start hearing things like, you're not my dad, so you can't tell me what to do. 
So that's, and there's a whole dynamic that I work with parents on. Um, for step parents, we need to start with, I'm just a friendly face in the house. You know, do not start immediately disciplining anybody because you're going to get rejected and kicked out of, you know, kicked to the curb from the kid's point of view. So we need to start with that. I'm a, yeah, I'm a supportive, you know, adult in your life. I'm a friendly face in the house. I'm your mom's partner. I'm going to support mom as mom disciplines you. Then you slowly work your way in and mom has to then make sure that she's, when she does have stepdad with the kids by themselves, she has to say to the kids, look, so-and-so's in charge now you know, same rules apply if I'm here or if I'm not, you know, and I will back him up on all the discipline things because he knows what we do and what we don't do in the house. But that again goes back to those, if we work on the family vision, values, and goals, the discipline is built on that. So family foundation, discipline built on that. And then slowly mom starts stepping away a little bit more and stepdad can start stepping in a little bit more. Now, if you have teenagers that's a whole new ball game because these kids are not looking for you to come in and tell them what to do and not to do. They're just not. So right. <laughs> you need to walk carefully mm -hmm. <laughs> in that process of becoming a disciplinarian. It feels like you're, we're circling back to the importance of communication and almost as if we are encouraging dads and, and moms together to understand you're going to have to repeat yourself a lot right <laughs> yes and that's okay yes because it's a slow cooking process yes absolutely yes and the repetition comes in the form of we're partners and we're the leaders of the family Repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. We are partners. We're the leaders of the family. You guys are the kids. We're, we are welcoming you to share your thoughts respectfully. But in the end of the day, we are the two adults of the house and we are the ones that are going to make final decisions. And that's, I mean, that's discipline in any home, but it's very, again, you have to negotiate your way into that role. But once you're there, then the kids know like, oh, he's in charge, mom's gone, you know, same old rules that happen all the time. Amy, for back to the disorienting and dislocated guy in, in terms of his role and his understanding mm -hmm. where he plays. Um, what are what are some suggestions for how how to navigate that that slow cooker period, that five to seven or however long it takes mm -hmm. to 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 navigate through that while you're trying to find your footing again, because, because of your trying to find your role, you've been dislocated and, and like guys need something to do, I guess is kind of what I'm getting at. We, we need a, we need a purpose. We need to fix things. We, we need to, we need to come in and, and establish some order and some control. Like th th this is, this is what would be going through my mind, I imagine, partly because I'm wired this way and partly just because of the chromosomes that I carry. But like help help that guy that's that's in that dislocation, disorientation space with some some simple things that he could do to to keep going un, until the un, until the recipe is fully cooked. Um, first thing is communication with your partner absolutely positively keep yourself open and vulnerable. And I know that those are two words that a lot of people push back against because they're uncomfy. But if you are open with your partner and you're vulnerable with her and you tell her, I'm not sure what my role is supposed to be. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do when your kids are here. I feel it feels awkward when your kids are here because then you all are your own unit and I feel like a third wheel on a bicycle, whatever that feeling is that you're going through, just sit down and say, I'm trying to navigate this, but I'm not sure. Can you help me with this? Because you guys are partners. So have those conversations, be open with where you're at. She can't read your mind. She has no idea what you're going through. So you need to use your words and, you know, have that conversation. First thing is communication. I, I, I thought all women could read minds. I'm, I'm confused. <laughs> 
Th- we tried. This coming, <laughs> this coming from The Bachelor. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, after that, I would say one of the most effective things that dads can do or stepdads can do is try to find that one-to-one time with the kids. Don't force it, but try to find some one-to-one time, you know, something fun to do with the kids. Take them outside and kick the soccer ball. Take them for a walk. If you've got a teenager who's, a, you know, in the house who's about to start driving, that would be a really good in for stepdads to be like, let's hop in the car, let's go practice driving. Because that's something the teenager wants to be doing. So you get into their world a little bit, you know, or, hey, you know, do you want to show me how you, you know, what this new video game is that you just got kind of thing. Just find those little windows of opportunity to slide in very gently. Do not force yourself into the picture because the kids, especially older kids, they'll push back. So just if you can, just kind of find those little spots where you can pop in and be supportive or, or do some one-to-one or invite them, you know, like, hey, let's go, you know, kids love to go like get some ice cream or something. It's like, you know, hey, let's just you and I go and grab some ice cream uh, or let's go run this errand together. You know, building that one-to-one time allows you a little bit of in with the kids, build some bonding moments that will then allow the child to feel comfortable with you more and open the door a little bit more. Like, okay, well, he was okay on that. So maybe I'll open the door a little bit more and let him in a little bit more. Um, Be supportive. In this, I learned from talking with a stepdad. um, He said, one of the things I realized my kids needed was my permission to talk about their dad in our house. Mm. Because the kids were feeling like, you know, well, if I talk about dad, are you going to get mad? Because this is your house, you know, kind of thing. So make that okay for the kids. You know, it's okay for you to tell me about things that you did with your dad when you were with dad. I would love to hear it. You know, what all did you do? Um, Just make it okay for the kids to talk about that. If there was a a parent lost through death instead, because we've been focusing on divorce, but if you are stepping into a stepdad role and birth dad has passed for any reason at all, be respectful of the grief that that child might not have processed yet. They may have processed through all that, but now that you're in the picture, they may be struggling all over again. Because, oh, I had these feelings with my dad. Is it okay for me to have these, oh, these feelings with you? Like, are you replacing my dad? So have those conversations with your kiddos and, you know, say, look, I know you miss your dad, you know, and I'd love to hear more about what you love doing with them. Or, you know, what was, what was he great at? You know, open those doors for the kids and let them talk about it if they want to. Some may not. Some may be like, no, nope, that's off limits and you're crossing a line. I don't appreciate you crossing. Going to have to walk, walk that line carefully. So communication, one-to-one time, you know, opening those opportunities when you can. Um, Again, watching, because Mark, you talked about, you know, men like to come in and settle everything and be in control and all that. You need to come in carefully. Don't come in guns blazing because otherwise everybody's going to be like, well, wait a minute, who made you boss? So you need to ease your way into that process. I know you want to settle everybody down and everybody get along because this is what we're doing. We're going to have to negotiate some of this stuff and be open to negotiating some of the stuff because, and even though you may not feel like it's worth negotiating, the kids may need you to talk them through some of that with, you know, with them. So um, be open to hearing the kids. Um, One sticky point, and this is huge with a lot of blended families, is um, family traditions. How we celebrate Christmas, how we celebrate birthdays, how we do this thing or that thing. I mean, think about how you guys do it with your own families. You know, oh, well, Christmas Eve, we do this. Christmas Day, we do that. Now you're bringing in what your traditions were, and they're bringing in what their traditions were. And now we all have to figure out how we're going to do new traditions What of your old traditions are we going to, you know, and talk to the kids about that. Like, what did you guys love doing for Christmas? Like, how do you guys love to do Christmas? Oh, that's interesting because my kids and I, we like to do this on Christmas. Do you think there's, you know, what can we do so we can blend a little bit of that? Or maybe we start a new tradition with all of us, you know, and it could be something silly like, 
I don't know, um, breakfast for dinner, you know, or something, you know, just something new and different. Again, be ready for some kids to push, push any of your ideas away because they're like, oh, hold on. Once again, who put you in charge? Um, firstborn boys who were the man of the house when dad stepped away or left or passed away or whatever, firstborn boys will be very protective of their territory. You need to be respectful of that because now you're thinking you're going to come in and be the boss and all of that. And they're going to feel displaced. And that's going to be, that could cause a lot of friction between you and, and that, that firstborn boy because um, he was in charge. He was the killer of all bugs. He was the, you know, fixer of things. And, and now you're coming in and he's feeling replaced and that's not going to, that's not going to roll well. So be respectful of that and, you know, talk to him about that and see where he wants to, you know, make sure he still feels control of some stuff and, and acknowledge what he did for mom before you came in. You know, I, I get it. You know, you really did a lot for your mom. I hope that you didn't feel, pre you know, a lot of pressure for that, you know, but if you did, I'm here to kind of relieve that pressure for you. What are some things, where, where are you okay with me stepping in? You know, it, it's all about communication. When dads step into the family, when husband or guys step into a family role, think about what your role is for both the boys and the girls in the family. You know, for boys, you're teaching them things like how to be a man, how to be a good partner to your wife, how to, you know, run the household well and support the family and, and things like that. For the girls in the family, your daughters, your stepdaughters, you're showing them by loving your partner, by working with your partner and communicating well, you're showing your daughters and stepdaughters the gift of what that's supposed to look like. What am I, you know, I always used to say, I, I, it, dad gave me a checklist, you know, for all of us girls, he kind of, the way he worked with mom and, and loved mom, it was a checklist for us, you know, and I was like, all right, so these are the things I expect my future husband to be. You know, so think about that when you're stepping into those roles as a stepdad, you're stepping into being a role model for what a good husband, what a good father, what a good stepdad looks like. And it really will land on those kids and they'll look for that in their healthy relationships moving forward. So just that, and Mark, you and I have talked about that before too, you know, the important role of, you know, modeling for, for our boys and our girls. Your answer, Amy, has loads of questions in it which is which are great because these are that's a good thing it's not a bad thing because okay, uh, <laughs> we've talked about that in some other episodes about how to coach your child and being curious and that that's the word that comes to my mind as I listen to you uh, open and vulnerable sounds a little scary for a lot of guys but it's a posture or mindset of curiosity mm -hmm. maybe a little more palatable um, and what you just illustrated was loads of curiosity and not trying to own it as much as um, a line might, might be a good word, but just, I, I thought the word curiosity wrapped up where your suggestions were coming from. Does that make sense? It totally does. Yes. And that's, I love that word. I hadn't thought about it that way before, but yes, you do need to be curious and you do need to be open to listening. It's a lot of listening. Because mm -hmm. if you come in and do a lot of talking and not enough listening, everybody else is going to reject it. And most guys aren't good at that. So let's just go ahead and acknowledge that <laughs> we suck at listening. <laughs> but if we come in with a curiosity mindset, it might help. It might help. <laughs> I, I also hear a willingness, a receptivity to change. And just, just mm -hmm. acknowledging that the 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 game has changed and, and okay, duh, Mark. Right. But, but maybe changed in more ways than you even realize things have changed and, and be willing to, to just hold those traditions, hold those ideas, hold those patterns and habits, just hold them loosely mm -hmm. and, and, and allow yourself to change. Maybe a, a different way to say it is go first, dad. Go first, go first with the listening, go first with the curiosity, go first with the, the willingness to, 
to suggest doing something different, the willingness to um, to come into their situation and not try to change it around so that it's more familiar or more comfortable for you, right? Like I, I can, listeners can't, I can see you nodding your head. Like <laughs> w- w- what's, what's your reaction to this idea of dad, you go first in this situation? I think if we do dad, you go first, you're modeling for the kids what you need from them. Mm. You know, and I think that's super important for any parent to, you know, if we want our kids to be compassionate, we need to show compassion first. We have to model what we want. Our kids don't naturally know this stuff, but if we go first and say, and it's okay, dads and stepdads out there, it's okay for you to say to your kids, I'm not really sure what to do in this situation. Can we talk about it? You know? This is new for both of us. I've never been a stepdad before. You've not been a stepkid before. So let's find, you know, so if nothing else, that's some common ground because we both don't know what we're doing. So let's figure it out together. You know, it's let's walk together on this journey instead of me leading you. The other thing I hear that's good. So good, Amy. The other thing I hear is that it's going to take a lot of, a lot of resilience on the part Mm -hmm. of the dad to, to acknowledge these emotions, acknowledge the strain in the relationship, acknowledge that it's taking longer than, than would prefer. Maybe even acknowledge that some of the relationships will never get to that ideal or where, where you would like them to be right. Like you're walking through all of this and yet maintaining the resilience of, who you are and the the benefit, the opportunity that you bring the, for those that are willing to engage with you, right? Like it's it's just, I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm like John said, your your stuff is just firing all kinds of thoughts and questions. Um, maybe maybe to narrow it down a little bit, be willing to be rejected over and over and over, rejected your ideas, rejected your suggestions, rejecting, re, being rejected for your overtures, but just keep, keep trying, keep going, stay resilient and, and, and be consistent. And I'm putting words in your mouth. You should be telling us what, <laughs> what it is, but like these, these are the ideas that are, that are popping into my head as, as you're talking. And I think something else is during that five to seven years is you need to understand as the step parent, step moms or step dads, you will get rejected. You, there will be, there might be a honeymoon phase and then you get rejected and you're like, well, we were doing fine until like two months ago and something, you know, went off the tracks. Um, But you need to understand that um, kids didn't get a vote in most of what has happened to them. They didn't get a vote in their parents arguing and and divorcing or a parent dying. They didn't get a vote in who you dated. They didn't get a vote in who you decided to marry and bring into the home. So there's gonna be some growing and there may be a lot of rejection um, along the way because they're like, well, I didn't, nobody asked me for my opinion on any of this not saying that we're going to let your eight-year-old decide who you're going to marry, but at the same point in time, you have to step into your eight-year-old's shoes and go, that must have really sucked for my eight-year-old that, you know, dad and I were fighting and then dad and I divorced and we've been angry and we're always yelling at each other. And, and this, you know, and, and then I picked up this new person into my life and I'm excited about this lovely new relationship, adult relationship that I'm having doesn't mean your kids are excited. They may never like your your partner. You're just going to have to wrap your brain around that. They did not choose. They did not fall in love with that person. You fell in love with that person. So just remember that your kids are, the kids in the family are coming through it from a different perspective than you are. So Amy, you've worked, um, you've worked with plenty of parents and I'm curious if they have, um, if there's a thread with uh, dads or moms really of what did they wish they had recognized sooner? Ooh, that's a great question. I think first thing is I, I think most parents wish that they had recognized that they don't have the necessary skills 
to be parents and be okay with that. We don't teach people how to parent. You know, and I say this when I do my workshops, I'm like, look, you had that baby in the hospital. They taught you how to feed the baby and clothe the baby and change the baby. They put you in the car and they waved. And I remember thinking as we were driving up 315, like, wait a minute, what are we doing now? Like, they just sent us home with this child? Like, what the heck? So it's okay. It's okay to not know things. You know, it really is. Um, but I think that we need to get brave and then start asking questions of the people that, that do know the stuff, you know, find a coach. Um, there's a lot of great books out there, but you know, so many parents tell me, I don't have time to read the book or I read the book and I still don't know how to apply it to my kiddo. So, um, the, the threads that most parents, you know, look back and go, God, I wish I knew, I wish I knew that we need to put our partnership first you know, and make sure that we were on the same page. I wish I knew that we had, that we should have talked about what our goals were for raising kids. I wish we had talked about what things I want to bring in from my birth family, what things he wanted to bring in from his birth family. And we negotiated that out instead of, it's this weird dance that we do trying to figure that out, you know, instead of um, having someone guide you through that process. Um, it's all those, it's, just give yourself permission that it's okay that you don't know and that it's okay to ask. In fact, it's better to ask than to keep flip-flopping around. I just chatted with a client the other day and she said, I realized as I'm sitting there talking with other, all my other mom friends that none of us know what we're talking about. And I said to them, <laughs> we need to bring Amy into this conversation because she's trained in this, she knows, you know, so so the common thread of not knowing what we're doing, you know, parenting is the um, least amount of training. It's, you know, the best job we can have with the least amount of training. That's why I'm out here because I want to give those parents that proactive stuff, tools in your parenting toolbox. You know, you may not need the pipe wrench, but boy, when that pipe bursts, you're happy to have the pipe wrench. So it's tools in the parenting toolbox that we need to search more of. And we don't give parents enough of throughout and I'm talking birth all the way through, you know, I, I had to learn how to parent adult kids. Our kids are now adults. And I was like, this is different. They have, you know, it's a whole different stage of life, you know, step families. They're like, oh, this isn't like a nuclear family. There's so many things I didn't know, you know, and no one told you about. <laughs> so those are the, so it's okay to not know. Yeah. And it sounds like it's a learning opportunity for parents to know how to give themselves grace. Yes, absolutely. Grace is good. Space is good too, because sometimes we get frustrated and we stay in the middle of the frustration. It's okay to take 10 minutes and go take a walk. It's okay to take, you know, five extra minutes in the shower while your spouse is watching the kids. Give yourself space and grace because it's parenting is hard. No matter what your family dynamic is, parenting is not easy and um, allowing ourselves to learn from our mistakes, to grow, um, and to be forgiving of ourselves. You know, I look back now with all the knowledge I have now, I'm like, if I could have a redo, there's so many things I would have done differently. <laughs> and our kids came out okay, but I'm still like, oh, I look back and I think, oh, there's so many things, you know, so many things <laughs> that I wish I could go back and fine tune a little bit, so... I was just grace, yeah. I was just thinking that this morning as well, Amy. I was working on something that kind of took me back to earlier parenting days, and I'm like, oh, I wish I would have done that, and I wish I would have done that, and like you're you're tapping on nerves for guys here, and like I know I'm feeling the pain, quote unquote. And I know other guys are feeling the pain of admitting that we don't know, admitting that this is new, asking for help engaging the professionals and, and the experts, which is, it, it's fantastic. And so I, I want you to, I mean, you just take a minute to describe how you, like, in addition to what we've already talked about, how you, how you're helping and how you can help those, um, on whom you've tapped the pains, the, the nerve pains, how, how you can help them that they don't have to do this themselves. No, you definitely don't have to do this yourself. Um, the best way for me to help families that are out there 
is for them to touch base with me and say, here's where I'm at. And it could be a discovery call, you know, where we just have a conversation and you share what your concerns are and I can share what I can do to help you overcome those challenges. Um, I love working with couples together, step couples. Um, I've just started working with engaged couples who will be forming a blended family because um, as Ron Deal calls it, preparing to blend. There's there's so many things you need to know to prepare to blend so that you're ready. It's my, my approach to parenting is proactive. I want to give you the tools. I want to give you the communication skills with your partner. I want to give you the parenting strategies, um, some discipline techniques along the way so that you are prepared for when the challenges come. And um, just by reaching out to me through, and Mark, I sent you the link where they can they can tap into my website and things like that. But um, if you want to reach out to me at amy at dare to parent .com, um, my um, website is up there ready to go with uh, my services are listed. But really, I offer um, private coaching. I'm about to launch a group. I'm calling it Save Our Sanity because all of us have lost our sanity at some point during parenting. So um, this fall, Save Our Sanity will be there. And that will be a membership-based um, program where I'll teach. There'll be a weekly teaching on some form of parenting, discipline, step family life. And then I'll also offer two Ask the Coach um, sessions through the month too. Um, and that's really, it's a sense of building community because I think and I call it the front porch thing. We don't have homes with front porches anymore. Mm -hmm. And so pe parents don't hang out with each other anymore. We drive into the driveway, we close, you know, drive out the driveway in the garage, close the door and go into our homes. So I want to bring back the front porch conversations. You know, I want to bring back moms and dads getting together and saying, this is hard. How do we get over this? You know, what do we do with this kid? Um, and that's going to be the purpose of, of my parenting group. I also offer for couples that really want to dig in and put in the work and it's it's fun it's not hard work um i guide you through the whole thing but i have coaching programs specifically for couples who are um you know already nuclear families or they're blending already or they're getting ready to blend and just helping them get the the family foundation pieces in the discipline the communication pieces all of that foundational work let's do it together i'll guide you through it I've got great worksheets and things like that that I help you through. It just puts the parts and pieces together. I think the best way for me to describe it is if, if someone just handed you a pile of puzzle pieces and told you to put it together but didn't show you the picture, you'd be like, well, I don't know what it's supposed to look like. I've got the advantage point of I know what the picture looks like, you guys. So just let me help you put the puzzle pieces together. You've got some strengths going. Let's put them all together. Let's put the puzzle pieces into place and I will guide you through that process. Amy, so good. I'm, I'm so glad that, that you were willing to come back on to the show and like we, we could talk for hours. Like you, you just get, <laughs> we're all shaking our heads here, right? You just, yes. you, you just, you open us up to a different, a different perspective, which generates questions and curiosity and, um, there's all kinds of good content that we covered. We're going to have to, we're, we're not going to put our listeners through another two hours of this. Um, but I suspect that there will be some that, that want to reach out to you. And so guys in the show notes that, you know, the drill, I'll, I'll have the website, but it's, it's dare to parent.com. Amy's email address, if, if you want to just bypass the website and go right to email, it's amyamy at daretoparent.com. And um, tell us again when when this group launches, Amy, and, and how they can get signed up if they're interested. Um, the group is going to launch this fall. I'm hoping late August. It'll be rare to go. Um, if they... If they go to um, my website, there'll be there'll be information there on how to get signed up. Um, the link that I'll give you for your show notes, there's a spot on there that says, um, um, I think it says SOS Parenting Group, the Save Our Sanity Parenting Group. All they have to do is click that. It'll take them to um, the landing page where they can find out more information about what the group is. 
Um, so that'll all be set and ready to go. Um, but again, it'll be on my website, right front and center, so they can they can join in. I would love to have your dads jump in because I really feel like if I could build a community of dads that feel safe and you know have have a good place to come and ask some questions, no judgment at all. It's a safe, safe place. Uh, just come and ask everything. Um, I just think it would make such a difference for families. Yeah, fantastic. Guys, I don't know how this is landing with you. I don't know who we're talking to today. I don't know who you're thinking of who also needs to hear this episode. But you know what we do. We get to the end of this and just challenge you not to let it come in one ear and out the other. You've made it 60 minutes with us. Take the next step and just turn this into action. Maybe that's reaching out to Amy. Maybe that's getting one of the books that that she referenced. Maybe Maybe it's just talking to your partner and expressing, I'm struggling. I don't know where I fit. I don't know what to do. I'm disoriented and, and it's, it's, it's bothering me. Whatever that action step is for you, take it. Don't let this just be information. Let it be about your transformation. John, great questions as always. Amy, thank you for coming back. Such a pleasure to have you back and to and, and to dig into this topic. And um, I, I imagine another re, uh, another visit down the road is, uh, is on the horizon. Uh, by your reaction, I can see you'd be open to that. We'd love to have you back to continue helping us get better at parenting and understand some of these um, more nuanced parenting situations, such as in a, in a blended family. So thank you once again for, uh, for coming back. Thank you so much for having me and allowing me to share some thoughts and ideas with your listeners and um, for encouraging them to be better dads and everything that you guys do, everything you put out there is just so important because we all need some, we all need some support and help. So thank you guys. I appreciate the time with you. All right, guys, you know the drill. We'll be back. Same bat time, same bat channel next week. Hope you have a great week until then. Adios. To send us your comments or questions, you can email us at feedback at the nextmanup.com. The theme music is by Jacob Stanifer at Jacob Stanifer Music, and this show is part of the NRT Podcast Network.